for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Man. She's as always got another weekly update video for you guys today. Today, I'll be going over the player ratings, changes, the roster updates, and of course, we got some exciting news about franchise mode. Uh, some of the patches, some of the fixes that are going to be coming very soon. Before I get into all that, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section as I try to do this every single week. It's very easy for me to do, and I know that it gets a good amount of views every single week. So I'm sure there's an audience that likes to keep up. To date with things like roster changes and obviously the updates. So if you want me to continue to do this series, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go let's get into the franchise news first, because I know that this is probably the biggest issue facing the Madden community, at least the portion that plays franchise mode. Me personally, I don't play franchise mode uh, very much. I used to play online franchise mode a lot, and I really wanted to get back into it, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense when I'm hearing all these issues out there, uh, especially the ones that they're talking about that are, you know, their top priority. They did put out some information on one of their forums about what their development team, specifically their franchise development team, is currently focused on. And these are things that we should expect to see in the November patch, maybe in a week or two from now. Uh, but ultimately, draft stability issue is number one. That is, um, they call it the draft revert, which is something I've heard a lot about in the comment section. Like I said, I don't play franchise mode, but I, you guys have been kind enough to let me know what the issues are in the franchise gameplay community based off of the fact that you let me know in the comment section. This is one that I've heard quite a bit, and that's the, uh, the draft revert. The draft revert essentially is when people either, they start their draft, they, they can't draft a player, and then it like kicks them back. Uh, like to week one or something like that stuff like that is, is so um, you know I don't even know how something like that happens but they're trying to figure that out the second one is the 30 second user apparently the 30 second user in a league can't join and I don't know if it causes problems for everybody because I've heard things where like commissioners get kicked out of leagues and all kind of stuff I don't know if these things are still going on but those are the two biggest ones that the uh, the Madden uh, development team that is responsible for franchise mode is working on and that's two of the bigger issues in the uh, in the game i know one of the other bigger issues was like um you know major players making it to free agency they said they fixed that and i haven't heard a lot about that i don't know if that's still going on but apparently uh before the last major update that was also a big problem where some of the best players in the game were making it to free agency that in real life would never make it to free agency so let me know in the comment section if that actually fixed because they said they fixed that but they also said they fixed a lot of things that didn't actually get fixed things like uh the field pass I can speak from experience is still broken because I'm still level one in my field pass. It's to the point I don't even play ultimate team anymore because the field pass, if I can't get free rewards, I'm not just going to keep spending more money because they can't give you the things that you earn. So things like that, you know, I can imagine a lot of people that are tired of waiting for these franchise mode updates and these franchise mode fixes to the point where they're just not playing the game anymore. They're just ignoring the game and waiting for whatever next big game's coming out that they like because there's a lot coming out in November. So I'm sure they're trying to hurry these updates out to try to save a little bit of face before, you know, major title games like Call of Duty and uh, God of War and stuff like that come out in November, basically just burying Madden even further down um, the you know further down the uh, the pecking order when it comes to to major games. Now I will mention there were some uh, some roster updates, some players that got traded that did uh, finally take effect because I was trying to record a gameplay yesterday and I was shocked that Robert Quinn wasn't on the Eagles yet. When Christian McCaffrey got traded, he was on the Niners instantly, but Robert Quinn was not, and uh, Jonathan Hankins was not on the Cowboys either. Those are the two biggest trades aside from the Christian McCaffrey trade that happened so far. They are finally on their team. So I don't know if they're waiting for the weekly update to put those guys on the team that they belong. Uh, other than that, let's go Let's go right into the going up pile and the going down pile. Keeping my Eagles fans up to date, I know every week because I do feel like Jalen Hurts should keep going up. He didn't play last week, so he didn't go up a point this week at all, considering that they were on a bye week. But at the end of the day, um, I still feel like he's got to keep going up because when I tell you some of the names that I'm going to read to you, I'll just go ahead and I'll get right to some of the lower names. Typically, I just read off players that are listed above uh, 85. That's the way that this list goes. But I noticed that Geno Smith had one of the highest ratings updates of the entire week. He had a plus three. So Geno Smith is up to a 78. And Geno Smith is playing, you know, terrific football. I'm not trying to bash Geno Smith at all. But the fact that he's a 78 after basically having an entire career as a bust, 
And Jalen Hurts, who's just kind of been rising since his rookie year, is only an 80 so far. And like I said, still one of the top MVP candidates. E easily a top five MVP candidate. I think Geno Smith is probably a top 10 MVP candidate at this point. But it just seems weird that both of these guys are rated so low. So, I don't know. To me, I definitely would rather the young Jalen Hurts on the rise at his current spot, at his future potential, over a, J over a Geno Smith and a two point difference really doesn't seem like a lot to me. The biggest name going up or at least the highest rating going up is DeAndre Hopkins who wasn't even playing. He was on a suspension. I think it was for, uh, I, don't, I don't even want to say, I think it was for steroids, but I really don't remember. Maybe it was for something, a masking agent or something like that. I really don't know. I really didn't follow, but I know he was out for six weeks. He came back and had a good enough game that they decided to give him a plus one overall and remind, I guess they remember that he's one of the best receivers in the league, if not the best receiver in the league. So he got a plus one. He's up to a 96. Well-deserved, amazing player. Uh, the next one up is a guy that I've been pushing for to get an, a ratings update. I think this this guy should be a 99 overall, and he's only a 95. He got another plus one. It's Justin Tucker, kicker from Baltimore. This is a guy, as far as a kicker is concerned, I think he's the most accurate kicker in history, and I think he holds the record for the longest field goal in history. So what else do you need to be a 99? You're the most accurate. There's really only two things when it comes to kickers. Unless you want them to be like faster or stronger or something stupid like that, it makes no sense. There's only two things that really require being a great kicker. That's accuracy. He's the most accurate ever. And kicking power. He's got the most kicking power ever. Why is he not a 99 overall kicker? I'll never understand. Mika Parsons. Uh, got another plus one. He started off, I think, like as like an 88. He's up to a 93 now. Say what you want about, um, you know, a ratings boost in general, but when you get a plus one in speed, that's a different story. So he's up to a 92 now. Terry McLaurin is a plus one overall. He's up to a 93. Uh, the next one here is the biggest ratings boost of the week aside from Geno Smith. Like I said, these are the like the plus 85 players, and that's Saquon Barkley got a plus 92 or plus two to a 92. He's I think he leads the league in rushing if I'm not if I'm not correct. He might be second. He's somewhere towards the top. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence got a plus one. Joel Batonio got a plus one. Max Crosby plus one. He's like top five in the league in sacks right now, so that makes sense. Uh, he's up to a 91. Roquan Smith gets a plus one. He's up to a 91. Um, Jamar Chase gets a plus one. He's up to a 90. It's surprising he's not higher than that by now. Uh, now we're going to get some plus two guys. First of all, I'll give, I'll give AJ Terrell Jr. out of the way. He gets a plus one overall, who was one of the best cornerbacks in the game for a while uh, last year. And he actually had a couple of down weeks where he lost ratings points. So he's back up to a plus one. I don't know what he did. But we got three more guys here that had plus twos. Patrick Sertain, the second, who is probably one of the best cornerbacks in the league already. He got a plus two. He's up to an 89. And Josh Jacobs, who also had a monster week last week, has a plus two. He's also one of the league-leading rushers. He's up to an 88 overall. The Raiders aren't doing too great, but they have a lot of individual players that are doing really good, like Josh Jacobs, who probably is playing for a contract at this point. I don't know how long he's been in the league if he signed a big deal yet. Uh, and then Quinton Williams, who's looking like one of the defensive player of the year candidates, had a plus two overall boost. He's up to an 88 as well. And then another Cowboy in Trayvon Diggs had a plus two. He's up to an 87 overall. And last but not least, we got Jalen Waddle, who had a plus one, who's up to an 87 overall. Going down, we got a couple of big names going down. Tom Brady going down in more than one way. He's going down uh, in in <laughs> he's going down in Madden. He gets another negative one down to 94 overall, and he's going down in real life. As before, I started recording this video, I saw that apparently they fi him and Giselle Bunchen filed for divorce. I don't usually follow that type of stuff, but it's definitely a big story. It's definitely worth mentioning. Next up, another big name quarterback going down as their entire season is going down, and that's pretty much the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers, who's at another another negative one. Down to an overall 92. I mean, once again, I don't really know what you want Aaron Rodgers to do with no receivers. There are rumors that they're going to trade for, I think I saw um, Brandon Cooks, or I forget who the other receiver was, but there's rumors that they're really trying to trade for somebody. They have to pretty much to save their season. Uh, that's going to be a theme through a lot of these going downs is Bucks. Packers are going down. Next guy up, Mike Evans, also a negative one. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but obviously, you know, they. I think when teams are just losing, they just start taking hits of some of their best players. Aaron Jones, running back for the Packers, going down. I don't really think that that's necessarily, you know, makes sense. He's down on 90 overall. Uh, Jair Alexander, negative two overall, down on 90 overall now, and I think he started the year at 94. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, not on either of these teams, but he's a negative one overall. I don't know what happened to him. Vita Veal also got a negative one. He's been going down a lot. I know last night, I watched him in the Thursday night game last night. He was making plays against the run against Baltimore. 
Keenan Allen, negative one overall, down to 90. Khalil Mack, negative one overall, down to 90. He's got six sacks on the year. Why would he be going down? He's going down quite a bit. I don't really understand that. Uh, Debo Samuel, negative one overall, down to 89. Uh, Kamara, here, possible future eagle, Alvin Kamara, down negative one. Again, he's dropped more than just about any player in this entire game this year. He's down on 87 overall. I think he started at like a 92. He's down like five rating points since the game came out. And Brandon Schraef. Also negative one overall, down on 87. We are about halfway through the season, so let me know how your favorite team is doing. Are you, uh, are you, are, is your team going up or is your team going down as the uh, season is about halfway through? Other than that, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be subscribed. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.